Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's time for the post-match pint here from the Radisson Red in Glasgow. First things first tonight, though, there's not going to be any full-time reaction. Um, basically, my heat's up Mars today. I forgot to pack the memory card, the camera. We were outside Hamden, ready to go. There you go, it's one of those things. Um, I'm joined by Ryan and Scott. Celtic are in the Betfred Cup final after their 30th consecutive Cup victory. 5-2 against Hibs. Scott, how do you feel about that performance today? I thought it was very, very good. I thought it was good. Yeah, I think it was very, very good. And I think Hibs' goals didn't seem to come from any sustained amount of pressure they were putting on us. It just came from kind of freak balls into the box, which we need to be tighter with. But against Hibs, you always expect them to score because they're an attacking team um, and they've damaged us a few weeks ago. But today was a sublime performance. Mm. Scott Brown, probably the best I've seen him for a long while. Rolling back the years. Roll, exactly, rolling back the years. It's good to see. I mean, he's got more in his locker than he likes to show us. That's what I think he's proved today. Mm. He's still got it. Um, two goals, unbelievable. Uh, El Yanusi, he can, he can dribble. We'll, we'll, get, to we'll get to him. But we'll I'm get to him. I'm getting to him because he's a good dribbler. He's a brilliant creative very very creative we'll football player. Um, He's got his own section tonight. The part, uh, the partnership between Frimpong and James Forrest, unbelievable mm. partnership. They love playing together. You can see it already. They play very very close to each other. Mm -hmm. One twos and then somebody's away. Usually Frimpong will run and James Forrest play them through. Love to see that. Um, what else did we have? We had Tom Logic. Decent Played performance. Well. Aye. Good, good performance. I did think he was good, and he was putting in more of an effort than what I expect to see from him. I think he's trying to take some, uh, take some learnings from Ryan Christie, which is is. I, due, I think you could see that due. he's got a, he's got a fight on for his for his jersey, and I thought there was there was one but time particular actually about 30, 35 minutes in where um, he, he chased down the centre half on a goal kick, and then he chased the right back, and he he, he was sprinting for 30, 35 yards, mm -hmm. like really chasing the ball, and I thought that's really not like him. So there's a lot of positives today. I just want to touch on Scott Brown though. Neil Lennon said he was a doubt yesterday. I don't know if that was a bit of mind games because he didn't look like he was in long on today. <laughs> Apparently he was having a fitness test 45 minutes before kickoff. <laughs> Apparently he was. Must have passed it with flying colours. Must have. He's a superstar. It. What a leader he's, that he's just stormed What a leader. Stormed the whole game. Uh, really, really impressive performance with Scott Brown in Midlay Park. Frimpong is another level. El Yunusi, another level. So impressive today. James Forrest and you Scott just touched on it there. James Forrest and Frimpong with the link up was unbelievable today. Just kind of give and go, and the two of them coming down that right hand side just tormented Hibs. And just a, an overall a phenomenal display. Edward with a cut back for both goals. Mm. Uh, first to Gregor and then El Yunusi. Live, I thought that he'd tried for the shot with El Yunusi goal, but when you look at it back, which I've had the chance to do now, Clearly cuts it across the goal, and El Yunusi puts it away. A phenomenal performance! What a display! Apart from that, couple of lapses and lapses in, in concentration, it was almost flawless. It could have been double figures. Mm -hmm. Amazing. But before we get to, to individuals, I know you've already touched on some individuals, but before we get to some individuals, do you think in some ways, Scott, that game today should have been more comfortable than it was because Hibs had nothing in the game, absolutely nothing. They get the first goal out of nothing. That's it's basically, I don't know who it is, um, it's, I think it might be McGregor or, or somebody puts a tackle on the edge of the box and it, it breaks to the boy, I can't I believe his luck, like he'd have been offside if a Hibs player touched it, mm -hmm. but it's a Celtic player that's made the tackle, put the ball through to him, and then for nowhere, it was wave after wave, we were dominating the, the, the whole proceeding, and then for 5-10 minutes we looked a wee bit wobbly because, mm -hmm. I mean, that just shows you what, what a goal can do mm -hmm. for, for, for any team in any game, but do you think... In hindsight, if we sorted those lap little lapses of concentration, it should have been a little bit more comfortable. Yes, but I always think that when somebody when we concede, we kick on. Mm. So I don't think we'd have scored five if they hadn't scored. I think we'd have maybe settled at three if we'd kept a clean sheet. I think we always kick on. So um, they were freak goals. They were freak goals, um, yeah. and I had a couple of slip ups as well. I think he had a good performance overall, but there's kind of there's there's a couple of mistakes in there. Mm. And they're very good from, or they were today, at least they're very good for, for dead ball situations. Mm. Um, I almost blinked and never even seen the first goal. So, aye, no, I, I mean, I think a goal is good for us sometimes. I think uh, just this season, and I think I would have agreed with you, season's gone past, but I think this season we look so intent on causing damage to mm. teams. And I think that 
maybe that statement of maybe we've been seen all if they hadn't scored probably isn't fair on how the team have set up this season mm. and they've put teams to the sword so convincingly mm. 6-0, 7-0 <laughs> so I think that if we would have scored more goals I think that the lapses in concentration there didn't have to happen I think we have to be a bit tighter mm. and I think that just the the 10 minute kind of spell that followed on for their goal I think we lacked a bit of energy in the middle of the park and I think that was and you both kind of touched on earlier there about Rogic is a good performance today he did but he doesn't have the energy that Christie does to kind of stir it back up in the midfield and start to take mm. hold in the middle of the park mm. and I think that was where we kind of we dropped off a wee bit when they scored I think we just lost that wee bit in the middle of the park there I, I possibly po what I want to uh, mention sorry Scott is you said you, you blinked he missed the first goal I totally missed the second goal because we just scored for 4-1 and it was it was chaos up my end and it was celebrating and then like I actually missed I wasn't even looking and the boy next to me went to 4-2 and I was like how'd that happen? how did that happen? and then there was there was a 10 maybe even 15 minute period after their second goal where again after both goals, they, they had spells on the ball and they didn't have any spells on the ball bef up until their goals in both halves. And then they, they flashed one or two shots over and you're thinking, we shouldn't really be in this situation. It seems strange because obviously, other than that, it's an absolutely brilliant performance and, and we could have racked up Blinding. so many goals. At the start of that second half, El Yunusi hits the post, Forrest hits the post. Um, we could have had an absolute battle load. Um, I want to come to El Unice in detail now, Scott. I'm, I rave about his work rate every week. I feel, I feel like a broken record and he's only been here um, a couple of months. His work rate is absolutely incredible. But I think we're really starting to see quality from him now. And I think the way, the way he can receive the ball under pressure today, particularly in the first half at times, was absolutely brilliant. Um, ball and goalie a couple of times, just and ball into his feet under pressure, his touch is brilliant. Um, he was finding Rogic in space, um, in between the lines of Hibs, and he's got a knack for scoring goals as well. Um, if you you think about, I think that's six in his last five games for El Unice now, it's seven and ten since he arrived. He's got a knack for scoring goals. If you look at his goal against Ross County a couple of weeks ago, he's in the right place at the right time just to poke it in after ball and goalie sends it goalwards. Twice today, obviously he's at the back post with a header. Um, but then when Edward does brilliantly um, for the second one, cuts it back, he's in the right place at the right time again. Um, he's, he seems like an all-round brilliant footballer. Aye, uh, he's, he's another level and I think we saw flashes of it, we spoke about it time and time again, but now it seems like he's settled in. Mm -hmm. He seems to be enjoying his football now um, and he knows how everybody else, where everybody else is going to be around him. He keeps the ball so close to his feet. You can tell that he's got that quality. Kind of similar to, to Edward in terms of how good he is with dribbling with the ball. Not as strong. Um, but we need that sort of goals. We need those sort of goals from the left hand side Absolutely, because aye. Scott Sinclair used to deliver mm -hmm. on that front. So it's brilliant. He's got a great return, but that's required. Um, and interestingly, right, I'm I'm thinking about Mikey Johnson's back. Yeah. Is it now El yeah. position to lose? Aye, I think it is, and that's it's it's good on one hand because the, that competition for places that we've got and and various posi uh, various uh, parts of the the park now. Ryan is something that that can only be good for us going forward. But I do think Mikey Johnson, who done so well um, in the early part of the season, he's been out for a wee while now with injury. We haven't seen him since before the last international break. He was back in the bench today. But I think El Yunusi, we know that he's he's obviously coming from Southampton. He's on loan. He's here to play, and he's got lots of quality. He's obviously a, a bit older than Johnson, but I think the way that he's playing means that that is his position just now and that's just how football works sometimes. If, if you go out with an injury and the guy that comes in and plays in your position is playing out his skin, then it's his position until you can change it. You can't hook him, you can't pull him out of the squad to bring back in Mikey just now because he is playing so well. And as a footballer, you said that he is so technically gifted, he's so brilliant with the ball at his feet. He's got that same tenacity that... Ryan Christie's mm. got and he shows it in, in spades, like he just goes and goes and goes and when he's bringing the product, the end product and putting the ball in the back of the net, that's that's vital to us mm. because having that, because we know now that we can get goals anywhere in that final third, so if we've got El Yunusi, we've got Ryan Christie, James Forrest and Edward, that's goals, like all four of them can score Scott 15 Brown. to 20 goals, Scott Brown <laughs> Scott today, Brown, aye. Aye. he's not going to score 15 to 20 goals this season <laughs> right enough, but they four can, aye comfortably and that's 80 goals a season if you can get that uh, yes well. it's a big ask right <laughs> but what I'm saying is that the guys can all score 10-15 goals mm -hmm. a season right and that's important for us El Yunusi 
it was an absolute standout today for me. Mm-hmm. When we first when we first started talking about El Yunusi and he was just a couple of yards short of where we wanted him to be. Yeah. But he didn't play a lot of football last season and he's really starting to kick on now and he's so confident and amazing. I you think about that early that early period where you could see that sharpness wasn't there, it's yeah. definitely there now. Yeah. And I'm gutted that that one at the beginning of the second half hit the inside of the post because he deserved a hat trick today. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. The other uh, man I want to come in now is Tom Rogic. I know you've mentioned it already, Ryan. In terms of the energy and stuff, I think we did see a little bit of improvement in that today, but I thought particularly in the first half, we were finding him in space a lot. Um, in between the lines of Hibs midfield and defence on the half turn, um, it's how uh, is it the second goal or the third goal? Um, he's on the, it's El Unusi's second goal, sorry. It's Frimpong into Rogic on the half turn and see on the half turn, turning on his left side, he's so dangerous because he takes one touch, gets out of his feet and wraps a lovely ball into the left uh, channel for Edward and Edward does brilliantly um, to set up El Yunusi and I thought he looked a real threat, I thought he looked much closer to the Tom Rogic that we know he can be, Scott, today. Definitely. Um, I, I like the look of him. A player that I didn't forget about but I, I wasn't desperate for, t- for him to come back because of how good Christie's been and I'm thinking today do you think um, he's been put in there because how well he's been playing? Well I was wondering that because I don't know if it, Christie had a problem today, um, I don't think he did, I haven't heard anything but it's either because he obviously played last weekend uh, at Aberdeen when Christie was suspended and he done well mm-hmm. so maybe that combined, maybe he is putting the work in and training, we, we we said already that he looked like he, he was trying to track back a wee bit more today and, and put that extra effort in that you don't normally associate with him, so maybe his training performances as well have, have just made Neil Lennon uh, pluck for him today, or maybe. he's maybe just resting Ryan Christie for Lazio, but again, mm-hmm. it's good competition for us to have. It is good, it is good to see them both getting, getting a run in, but for me, Ryan Christie's still got to be the number one mm. in that 10 role. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased with, with Tom Rogic. Um, another player I wanted to touch on, right, Callum McGregor. Mm. Brilliant performance. Uh, was what? it though? You, what? You're praising Callum McGregor? Listen, <laughs> I love Callum McGregor. That's right? man slates Callum McGregor all the time, by the way. That's lies. <laughs> That's <No>. lies. <laughs> If it's known camera, it was never said. <laughs> uh, I just sometimes think, and he he says it himself in press conferences. He talks about how far back up the pitch he is, Aye. and it's a different role. Um, I don't think he maybe enjoys it as much, but he always says, "I'll play any position for this club." Mm. So you want to applaud that? Brilliant for Callum McGregor. Today he was good, and he gets his goal, and he's in those positions that he used to get into a year, two years ago when mm. he was further up the park. And I really, really like to see that because he's a creative player and I sometimes don't think we get the best out of him. He does his role, he does yeah. his role very, very well, yeah. sweeps up and, and as the engine room makes things work and makes things, sits there next to Scott Brown and that's that's his place in the team. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to see creativity from him and I've seen a bit more of that today. I I think what we've seen in the past couple of weeks for Callum Gregor obviously gets goal against Ross County as well and um, with a couple of chances in that game. He's playing a lot more like a traditional eight. If Scott Brown's a six, even though Scott Brown was an eight the day, by the way, two goals, right? We know that. But um, if Brown's a six, McGregor's the eight, and, and Christie or or Vogic today's the ten. Um, and I think goals are something that he can get a bit more of. Callum McGregor, obviously, we've seen it, we've seen it before, but um, I was impressed with him today. He's got it in his locker, right? And what I think over the last couple of weeks watching Callum McGregor is it's it seems like. After his prolonged period of playing so much football, it's like he's got a second wind in the last couple of weeks. He's really done energy and an enthusiasm and a burst about his game. And he's started to really kick on and a bit more, like you said, a bit more offensive, like the number eight. And he's got that all day. All Aye. day. He can put the ball in the back of the net and yep. be a bit more creative further forward. I think he's, he's sat deep with, with Brown for a while. It'd be nice to see him just start to kick on and do a bit more of the creative stuff. Right, I'm delighted. I'm delighted with that today. Obviously, apart from the two lapses, um, it's a really good performance. And we were saying come out of the game, Scott, um, talking about maybe El Yunusi, uh, McGregor, Edward, who Edward, who he didn't get his goal today, right? And I, I've said in the past few weeks, when a striker's not scoring, what else does he contribute to the team? Well, Edward pulls up trees with two Massive. absolutely sublime assists today. See that first one where Julian? I don't know. He, he might be offside. Um, at live, I couldn't tell. Uh, in the I stadium, but um, I've, n- I've not seen it back in, in detail yet. But Julian pings that diagonal to him, and the touch is just unbelievable. The touch is unbelievable. 
um, and very very similar assists both for McGregor and for El Yunusi. so he was brilliant today but what we're saying coming out of the ground was to get back to my point oh he's brilliant uh, he's playing well he's and then we're like that's actually a really good team we've got oh, a good mate. team you just realised that? no but listen <laughs> we've not always had we've, we've had a good team right and, and we've been dominating domestically for three years more than three years now we know that right but the competition for places all over the park mm -hmm. is something I think that's really changed this season. We've lacked that for a long time. We, we always knew where our weaknesses were. The right back position was always a sticky one for mm -hmm. us. We knew that people would turn it. Frimpong. Frimpong. <laughs> Superb. But uh, we even but, like, but didn't, you know what I mean? didn't have as much competition for our centre back places. We used to have injuries, even though we'd maybe uh, on the roster, we had plenty of centre backs. Mm -hmm. There'd be injuries here and there. So for me, um, Do you know what I mean? I, what I mean is, we've, we've got squad. a very good team. What I mean is, the squad, the squad is much better this season, and I think we can see the fruits of that. That's uh, what I'm saying. And I don't think we're struggling from injuries. That might be part of it. I think further in the season, we might start to see a a bit more slip ups because big people are going to be out. I'm really worried if we lose Edward. Obviously, that's I don't a big know where Andy Griffiths is. I know he's just getting back onto the grass at training. Yeah. Um, but I would worry if we lost him, but apart from that, I think we've got strength and depth in each position. Aye, I think that's the only area for it, Ryan, in January, is centre forward, where we might need to add a wee bit more depth. But other than that, the competition all over the park that we've talked about already and the performances we're seeing for guys in, in a couple of positions where we've got people pushing people, that's brilliant. It's so positive and it really leads to, you, you've got to think that the squad can only just now kick on and start to put on an impressive display of football throughout the season mm -hmm. because having that competition and the drive for players to like Tom Rogic to come in today and really start to show a bit more tenacity and a bit more drive to try and win the ball back and where he's been he's been a bit of a utility player before where he just comes in and he's really good because he's a, a wizard but today he showed a bit of more a bit of guile and a bit of like drive to try and win the ball back where he wouldn't have before so players like that are doing that because they know they have to fight for their spot in the team and that will only push Christie and we've got that across the park so mm -hmm. it only leads to a good outcome for Celtic this season as long as we can keep those guys fit and pushing for places. Absolutely, 100%. That will do us for today. Send on whoever it is in the final. We'll be back on Tuesday with the starting 11 prediction for the Lazio game over in Rome. Please like the video, comment with your own thoughts on today's game below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We're so close to that 20,000 mark, I keep saying it. Hopefully we can get over it this weekend. Um, that will be huge for us, we put so much time and effort into bringing you this content. So if you haven't already, please hit subscribe below and we'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you.